the, the ECAS actually that you could drive and can drive uh, still today, tonight, is the first standard production vehicle that has actually received the license for autonomous driving testing in the state of Nevada. So what does that mean? That means that this car already has all the systems on board that you would need if you wanted to use it to test autonomous driving. So it has all the systems on board. Legislation is, of course, not already there that you can drive with any car and test any car autonomously. But the E-Class has received the license plate here by the governor of Nevada to, to, to be able to do autonomous testing with that vehicle. So that's, that shows that our serious production vehicle is already very, very well advanced. And it can do testing, autonomous testing, on the roads in Nevada already today on interstates, on state highways, for example. We also do testing in the United States with Daimler trucks. So Daimler trucks also has a long history of uh, what you call platooning trucks following one another. One more activity where Daimler is very active and using the Nevada licenses to do this. In the long term, um, fully automated driving will definitely need intensive development work. And this development and technology will be, will be a step-by-step -step approach. So we are working hard on this, of course, in Germany. We are working on this in China. And we are also working on this here in Sunnyvale. So probably some of you already have the chance to drive or to co-drive this vehicle, the S500 Intelligent Drive that we have presented some time ago. This already gives you a concrete view of the future of intelligent driving and our vision of autonomous driving, because this car can already drive autonomously. The car is able to master complex traffic situations, and this fully automated. We gather experience, we analyze the requirements that we need for this technology, and to make sure we can develop all the functions needed. So autonomous driving really gradually becomes reality. We are often asked, of course, who is the farthest in the field of autonomous driving? What about Google? What about Uber? And we see those technology players not necessarily as a threat to us. But we see that this confirms that we are also looking for the right technological development as they are. Automotive business is obviously still an attractive growth business. Otherwise, these companies wouldn't stop coming into this business. And we always welcome every new competitor. We have 130 years of successful experience. So that doesn't really frighten us. And of course, we help seeing them promoting the idea and accelerating the acceptance of autonomous driving. We see ourselves in a strong position. And at the moment, definitely, the tech industry still needs the automotive industry. So we don't feel there, is, uh, um, there, is, there will be a replacement of our industry. But of course, at the same time, we cannot ignore them either. It's very serious and, and uh, professional competition. Surely we don't stop refining ourselves down the road. So if you imagine what opportunities will come up, for example, for a car sharing service like Car2Go, which is also part of Daimler, once we have autonomous driving and no driver is any more involved, that totally, of course, changes the game for these activities. Looking at the Mercedes-Benz F015 luxury in motion, we have already presented a visionary approach how the car of the future could look like presented this one one and a half years ago, and this was the first manifestation of how it could really look like in the future. How would a car change once autonomous driving technology is really available? Communication and interaction between the vehicle, the passengers, and the outside world is one of the key ideas behind the vehicle. The interior of the vehicle becomes a contextual and highly personalized digital living space. So you can see here that we introduced new forms of communication, new displays, new content you would be interested in looking at once you are driven on your, on your route. The intelligence of the car allows for continuous exchange of information between the vehicle, the passengers, and the outside world. So you can really, as a passenger, use the free time that you gain for something else. While traveling, you can relax, you can work as you please. And this really makes the car the third living space after home and work. We consider these three spaces to be really the key spaces where people will spend most of their time in the future. And of course, people expect to have all these digital life ready and available in all of these three spaces. 
And in our role here as creators and product makers, we ask ourselves always how can we even create a better user experience while living with all this technology and very rapidly changing technology. And the answer is that we want to make sure the interaction between technology and our customers becomes really natural and really seamless. That's why we use artificial intelligence to understand the context of the customer in that certain situation and also personalize the vehicle according to the needs of the customer in that special situation. And then we provide the technology and the information and options to choose things to happen just when they are needed and not on a general base, also to avoid distraction, obviously. So the car should anticipate my actions and my, my needs that I have and offer it to me in a way that delights me. I still remain in control of the experience, that's the idea but I'm supported by the full intelligence of the car. That's what we are working on. We take, for example, the sensitive touch control buttons and the steering wheel of the E-Class that you have experienced. They're like a smartphone interface. They allow you as a driver to control the entire infotainment system just by swiping across these touch control buttons. And you don't have to take your hands off the steering wheel. And all of this with minimum driver distractions. That's one of the examples where we really focus on defining the best human machine interface, reduce and minimize driver distraction, but at the same time allow for the best user interaction. Now I'd like to like you to welcome Cal Moss who will tell us a little bit more a little more little, little bit more about intelligence in automotive. <laughs>